Hi, I'm Lee from E24 Workshop. Today I'm going to walk you through the step-by-step -step process of replacing the rear brakes and rotors on this 2015 Jeep Cherokee. I'm going to show you the passenger side today. The driver's side will be the same procedure. The tools you are going to need to complete this job are as follows. One, you're going to need a torque wrench. You're going to need some needle nose pliers, some air tools or a breaker bar and a 19 millimeter socket. You're going to need a hex bit size 5, a T55 bit, you're going to need a 10 millimeter open-ended wrench, a flathead screwdriver, a piece of pipe, a 3 8 drive, a wire brush, a punch, a tape measure, a brake caliper wind back tool, a set of hammers, and some penetrating fluid. To start this job, first we must get in the vehicle. Turn the car to run, but do not start the motor. You just want the electrical components to turn on. What we want to do is we want to set the car to brake maintenance mode. In the bottom right hand corner of the center console you're going to see a button with a plus symbol with the word more underneath it. On the touch screen you're going to want to push on the word settings. Again on the touch screen click on safety slash assistance. Again on the touch screen click on the word brakes. In brakes you're going to be looking for the words brake service mode. On the touch screen click on brake service mode. When this screen is brought up, you want to click on yes. After clicking on yes, you're going to hear a whining noise coming from the vehicle. This again is the vehicle's computer retracting the parking brakes to allow you to service the brakes. Once that is completed, we can now start with replacing the brake pads and rotors. In this video, I'm going to be using impact or air tools sometimes. If you don't have the benefit of air tools, just start with a vehicle on the ground and loosen the lug nuts with a breaker bar and a 19mm socket. Then raise and secure the vehicle and remove the lug nuts wheel and tire. With the way that this vehicle is designed, there's not enough room to be able to use a socket, so you need to use an open end wrench in this situation. It makes the job a lot easier if you're using a ratcheting wrench like I use in this video. There's two 10 millimeter bolts, one at the top of the bracket, one at the bottom. First, you must remove the nut that is holding on this bracket that's sitting on the caliper. Once that is done, start loosening up the bottom caliper bolt. Do not remove this bolt completely because if you do, when you go to loosen up the top caliper bolt, the caliper is just going to swing up on you. So just leave this bolt in just a little ways when you, until both bolts are loosened. If the guide pin starts spinning on you while you are loosening up these bolts, just use some needle nose pliers to pinch the ends of the guide pins so that way it holds the guide pin in place while you take the bolts out. When it comes to removing the top caliper bolt, simply just push the bracket out of the way it'll literally pop right off. There's enough play in it that you can just remove it, but again, there's not enough room to get a socket in there. That's why, once again, you have to use this open-ended wrench. Again, it is much easier if you have a ratcheting one. Once again, if the guide pin starts to spin with a bolt, simply use your needle nose pliers to pinch that end of the guide pin so that way you can turn the bolt out. Now that we can remove the caliper, we can take our brake caliper wind back tool and press the piston back into the caliper.
After the piston is compressed back into the caliper, you're going to need your T55 and your 3 8 inch drive and possibly a piece of pipe. These two bolts we're now going to remove are going to be tighter than the last few bolts we've had to remove, so the pipe is just used for extra leverage. These two bolts are located on the back side of the bracket. Once the bolts are removed, you can then remove the bracket and the brake pads. After that bracket's removed, it's time to remove the rotor. There is one set screw that sits in this rotor. There is a trick to getting these set screws out easier. First hit them with some penetrating fluid. Take your punch and place it at the top, bottom, left and right corners of the set screw and give it one or two good hits with a hammer. Do not hit the punch in the dead center of the set screw. You do not want to mess up the thread. If you strip out the set screw, you can still drill it out, but it's a lot easier to do it this way. After hitting all four corners of the set screw with your punch and hammer, take your hex bit size 5 and place it into the set screw by hand. Push it in as best as you can because you do not want to strip this out. After pushing it in as best as you can by hand, put your drive onto the bit and then remove the set screw. After the set screw is removed, then take your hammer and give the rotor a good few solid whacks. The rotor will then pop off. After removing the rotor, it is time to prep our brake caliper bracket. Take a hammer and remove the old brakes. Take reference of where your scratch indicators are on the pads before removing. You will then see metal clips that help hold the brake pads in place. Again, remove by hand or simply use a flathead screwdriver to pry them out. You will have new ones to replace these. Once they are removed, take your wire brush and clean up both ends of the caliper bracket. You do this to remove any brake dust buildup or rust so the new clips can set in the caliper bracket properly. The caliper bracket also has two guide pins that allow the caliper and brakes to adjust and wear evenly. Remove both of these guide pins and grease them thoroughly. I recommend removing the rubber boot and greasing the guide pin then placing the boot back on the pin and applying more grease. After doing this, place the guide pins back into the bracket. Take a very small amount of grease and put it on the caliper bracket where your metal clips set in. Then put in your new metal clips that came with your brake pads. Take the caliper bracket and put a small amount of grease on the new metal clips that you just placed on the bracket. Take your new brake pads and slide them into the caliper bracket into the metal clips. 
Make sure to install the brake pads so the scratch indicators are in the same locations as the old brake pads that you had removed. This vehicle comes with different rotor size options. So what you want to do is take a tape measure and measure the outside diameter of the rotor that you are taking off the vehicle. Take the measurement of the outside diameter of the rotor and convert it to millimeters. This will be the size of the rotor that you will need to purchase for this vehicle. To prep your rotor for installation, simply spray some brake cleaner on your new rotor and then wipe it off with a shop rag or towel. The brake cleaner is used to remove the oil on the rotor that is placed there from the factory to keep the rotor from rusting while it sits on a shelf. You want to remove this oil before placing your brake pads against it. When placing your new rotor onto the wheel bearing, already have your set screw on your hex bit. This just makes it easier to thread the set screw through the rotor into the wheel bearing. Once you started the set screw by hand, attach your drive and tighten on the set screw with your drive and hex bit. Take the bracket with the brake pads and reattach it to the vehicle. You're going to need the two bolts that take the T55. Make sure to start the two bolts by hand. Once the holes are lined up and both bolts are started by hand, take the T55 bit and a drive and tighten these bolts down as well. Take your caliper and slide it back over the brake pads. When placing the brake caliper back over the brake pads, make sure not to kink or twist either the electrical line or the brake line to the caliper. Take the two 10 millimeter bolts and thread in the caliper. Again, remember if your guide pins start to spin with the bolt, just use a pair of vice grips to tighten it down on the nut and then use your 10 millimeter open-ended wrench to tighten down these two bolts. Slide the bracket back over the top bolt. Take the 10 millimeter nut and thread it onto the bolt by hand. Once the nut is started by hand, take your 10 millimeter open ended wrench and tighten down the nut. Place the tire on the vehicle and use the 19mm socket to start the lug nuts by hand. Once each lug nut is started by hand, you can use your air tools to speed up the process. Always make sure when tightening down a tire with air tools or a wrench to use the star pattern.
After tightening down the lug nuts with an air tool, make sure to take a torque wrench and tighten down the lug nuts to 100 foot-pounds torque for this vehicle. Again, while using the torque wrench, make sure to use your star cross pattern to tighten down the lug nuts. The last step to doing this brake job is to remove the vehicle from brake maintenance mode. To do this, simply get into the vehicle and turn the ignition switch to run. When all the lights on the dash turn on, compress the brake pedal and lift up on the parking brake button in the center console for a few seconds. You will then hear a grinding noise and on the touchscreen display you will see exiting maintenance mode. The vehicle is re-engaging the parking brakes. Pump your brake pedal a couple times to push the piston back out of the caliper and rebuild pressure. Thank you for watching. I hope this video helps you out. Again, I'm Leigh from 824 Workshop. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and share on your social media platforms to help the channel grow. Thank you.